What's up, YouTubers? Just got done doing the deferred maintenance on this Jeep here. I went wheeling a bunch in the last year and then kind of didn't take care of stuff that I needed to, so I went through everything with a fine tooth comb. Found a couple parts worn out, which is typical, and ordered stuff, and I'm as far as I can go today, and now I'm just parking it back where I keep it in storage. But I thought today, why skip over doing a video? I thought, why don't we talk about some of that <laughs> stuff that's all over the news, that roller coaster failure on a support beam. It has something to do with welding, and this isn't just a welding channel, but I thought we could all learn something by looking at at least what's going on with this. So let's get into it. So in this first picture of this roller coaster support, for the track we can see obvious evidence that's cracked and pretty much all the way through and it, they've separated now by the look of this it holds a car like vertical that you ride on so essentially when you look over your shoulder left or right you'd be staring at the ground and the opposite side you'd be staring at the sky so pretty wild there and the crack goes all the way around I would suggest that it probably started on the inside, which is basically the opposite side that we're staring at now, and then over time worked its way all the way around. And there's a couple reasons for that, and I'll talk about it when we get into the other pictures. But we can see a pretty sizable gap, so that's not good. It's close and appears to ride down a weld, which will be clearer in other photos, which that's not good as well, because that can at least give evidence as to why it failed. But uh, let's look at a couple different angles now. This picture is a lot better. You can see clearly that the crack kind of starts up where the weld is and then wraps around onto the actual upright pipe or support. And it's pretty, you know, zigzag jagged. You can see how the pipe, like parts of the crack are stuck in, parts are out and it's not really broke cleanly and I think what you're seeing there is that crack didn't just magically form the size it was all the way around it would have moved back and forth when that track shifted and it would have bent you know that metal in and out until it fractured or cracked more so I think that's what you're seeing there where some parts are sticking in some are a little bit out that's a good indicator that it took a while for that to break. It wasn't instantaneous. You know, cracks like that generally don't just show up instantly. It takes time and movement to cause that. You can see that's quite a substantial separation. And not only that, it's possible that when it broke all the way through, that the top actually sunk down into the bottom. I mean, that could be what we're seeing here. Definitely not good. Now, if you notice where those four bolts are attached to that plate there, there's a couple things that I thought were interesting. One, those two holes at the bottom, are those supposed to have bolts in them and they're missing? I find that odd. I also find it interesting that if you look at that square plate that functions as like a washer that attaches those four however many bolts up uh, through, you see that gray line at the top right edge of that plate? That's kind of an indication to me that that was unpainted and due to movement, aka those bolts are either loose or work loose, that the area that wasn't painted is now exposed because that was all loose and moving. So that could have contributed towards a failure as missing or loose bolts and too much movement. I find this also interesting. Again, are those missing bolts? Looks to me like there's four bolts that are missing. I mean, why would you have holes where washers and nuts appeared to have been and there was never in them anything in there to begin with? So that's interesting. And the other thing that's interesting is that gap between the areas that are bolted together where the bolts exist. Should that gap really be there? All of those things are indications. I mean, it's not necessarily what caused a failure, but obviously the question needs to be answered because if those bolts all broke or fell out due to movement then obviously that was a contributing factor so let's look at some other angles so here we see clear evidence obviously the crack goes all the way around now that little part on the left side of the column that sticks in 
that may be the last part that actually broke. What you may be staring at, essentially like an inch or two of that column, that pipe was still attached. And then when the ride went around that point and pushed outward, that it just flexed that in because it was still attached. And then when it came back to its resting point, it just was left bent in. You know, that's a possibility. Now, when we look at where that white plate bolts to that appears to be gold colored part of the rail system, it looks like there may be one bolt in there and the other ones are broke as well. It's kind of really hard to tell. I mean, maybe those are welded studs and there's only nuts on the inside. That's a possibility as well. I simply can't tell from these pictures, but clearly again, the crack follows the weld up top and that's gonna be typical. I mean, you're not gonna have a crack cut through a weld, which is typically thicker than the base material and likely stronger into that other adjoining pipe, that support pipe, more than likely it's just gonna go right around the thickest part of the weld, which is gonna be near the toe or the weakest, I should say, which is at the tow line. When you see where it finally came to rest after it broke, you can see it's offset quite a bit. Now, part of that could be that it fully cracked and then it's just stuck over there, and if it was lifted up, it would return back to the left to where it's more or less where it should be. I don't know on that, but the fact it's offset so much is kind of leading me to believe that there might have been quite a bit of tension pushing that column to the right, and that would have also led to the failure eventually of it. And you got to remember that angled support column that hooks up into the main load bearing one that you know if that sunk at all or if anything dealing with this support column lowered like sunk into the ground or anything moved that would put a tremendous amount of stress on that point which again as that ride goes around that rail there's a lot of flex in that because it's a lot of weight moving at an angle coming into the corner of that so this is exactly the failure you would expect to find you know, this is exactly where it would fail. When you look at that upright column as well as the support column that comes in at an angle, if that track as the weight of the car that goes around it moves that track to the left and to the right in the picture, the weakest link is essentially below that horizontal plate with the bolts and above where that intersecting uh, support column that comes in at an angle is. I mean, the, the load is either straight down, which, you know, that's not going to cause a failure from the weight of it, but the pushing to the left and to the right on that column is going to put all the force in that very small section that's basically directly above the angled support column. And guess what? That's exactly where it failed. Now, there's a lot of reasons why it might have failed there. If there was a significant amount of undercut on the weld, or if the weld had poor root fusion or wasn't fully welded all the way through. So say the tube diameter, the, the wall thickness is say half inch. I have no idea what it is, but let's say half inch. Well, if the weld on that section is three eighths of an inch thick, well, that's thinner than everything else. So of course it's gonna fail there. Kind of like in that video I did on Dodge Ram truck frames breaking, it just comes down to a simple problem of uh, a tremendous amount of force given one area that has virtually no flex uh, to dissipate that. And well, that's why you have cracks and failures like this. Now, I'm not saying that it was engineered improperly, definitely not saying that. It's quite possibly over-engineered and a lot stronger than it needed to be in this case. But yeah, the realistic probability that a weld could have been either undersized or there could have been a weld defect could really play a role in this. Not to mention, I don't know what kind of steel that these tubes are made out of. If it's some kind of high strength tube in an effort to reduce weight by reducing the wall thickness, well, guess what? When you weld high strength steel with certain processes or have too much heat input, etc., you get the idea. Uh, you can have issues with welds being excessively brittle. If there were arc strikes, not that this was stick welded, but if there was a couple arc strikes or some kind of other issue in, in the heat affected zone or near the weld, that also could have played a role. Now this was likely done with dual shield flex core or spray arc anyways, 
but you know which are very strong high penetration processes so you know it's really hard to say i'd have to look at it up close to figure out what the failure reason is now i've never been in this theme park and I didn't really realize how big these columns were, but when you look at this picture, it really puts everything in perspective. I mean, that's an absolutely massive column to have broken like that. And you can see, judging by the welds, I mean, it looks to me like it was probably dual shield or maybe spray arc. A lot of it was probably done on a positioner because they're simply too clean of welds to have been done by hand, you know, not not knocking anything, you know, a lot of skilled welders out there, but, you know, why make it hard on yourself trying to do it by hand when you can have a machine do it, you know, whether or not it was a robot, who knows. But the welds, I mean, they look clean, nothing, at least from face value, that would tell me, hey, this thing is going to fail, but, you know, who knows on that. In case you're wondering why they have bolted connections instead of welding that, my guess is it's just for repair purposes. I mean, obviously, it's a lot easier to replace a single column and just unbolt it. You know, they probably still have blueprints for all of the original columns, so they could order another one to be made in six months later or whatever, have it show up, and they can just unbolt what's there and throw a new one up. Which brings up kind of the last part of this video. What's the odds or probability of doing repair on this? Well, let's talk about that. So here we go, the start of a stabilization. Uh, I'm not sure if they're actually going to repair it in place, but what you see here is a crane lifted up the track, likely so they could realign the pieces, and then they welded on what's called a strong back, which is commonly used for test welds and all sorts of stuff to keep things from flexing due to how much weld shrink and pull. And they welded a bunch of strong backs on there to kind of keep things aligned, likely as they inspect everything. Now, just looking at this, it almost looks like the tube thickness, and again, it might be hard for you to see, but the tube thickness doesn't appear to be as thick as I would have thought on these columns. I mean, part of me is probably, you know, tend to overbuild everything, so on something like that, I would have been using half-inch tube, but... From a structural standpoint, it probably wouldn't need to be that thick, which is also why it likely broke. I mean, had that been thicker, it likely would have held the stress a lot better and wouldn't have cracked, but at the expense of massively increased weight. And sometimes you do want flexibility in something. Like, you can only make things so thick to where it still will likely break, where you need more flexibility. I mean, it's kind of like a semi-truck frame. You could make it out of one inch thick steel, it would still flex, and for what gain? You're better off engineering it to accommodate for flex than you are trying to make it so rigid and so heavy that it just doesn't flex. So anyways, from a repair standpoint, is this repairable? I would say yes. The problem is, is nobody wants to put their name on the line. Now, you're probably unaware, but... To weld on stuff like this where human lives are at risk, like structural steel, be it a bridge or an amusement park ride, I've heard that insurance rates can be over $70,000 a year for a person. And that's why I don't know that they're going to do a repair, a permanent repair and leave it and open the ride again because of the liability of it. And the other thing that you got to think is that this whole thing was engineered probably with computers and a couple of smart people, as a system. By reinforcing one of these tubes, one of these upright supports, to where it's now stronger than the others, which it will be after any kind of repair to fix a problem like that, may create less flex in that area and more flex somewhere else, which is then in turn going to cause it to break somewhere else. You know, it's lasted as long as it has before this failure, you know, strengthening one section without addressing where that force is going to go would likely just push the failure somewhere else. So realistically, I think that the only solution to repairing this is to basically have the company that made them or another company remake the upright support and then swap it out, which means, unfortunately, this ride's going to be down for quite some time because something like that, I'm sure you can't just whip up in a couple days. 
you know, so uh, kind of unfortunate from my aspect, if someone, you know, let's say we're in the middle of nowhere and someone wanted a theme park running and this is what was preventing it, without a doubt, I'd sign up to climb up on that rail and spend probably three days straight repairing it. And it probably would never break again when I was done, you know, so is it repairable? Uh, yeah. I could do it. I'm pretty confident that I could. I'm confident that many other people could. It's just like I said, in today's world, liability is everything, and nobody wants to put their name on the line for something like that. You know, deferred responsibility is the name of the game. You know, everyone wants somebody else to blame, so when shit hits the fan, they're not the one that's, you know, going to be held accountable. But in, in jobs like this, I mean, it can turn into you know, a massive legal battle, especially if somebody gets injured or killed on something like this. I mean, the court cases can take six to 10 years to battle out. Plus, you know, can make companies go bankrupt. Insurance companies can go bankrupt over, over, you know, failed repairs on stupidly high liability stuff. And that's why the insurance is so much. And that's why, you know, they don't just let any, you know, Tom, Dick and Harry <laughs> weld on stuff like this and repair it. But yeah, with that said, yeah, it, I think it's repairable, but nobody's going to do it, would be my opinion. And if they do, more power to them. But I'm sure some engineer put his name on the line that said it's good to go with a repair because, you know, <laughs> nobody wants to have their signature be the last one on the list. All right, let's go to conclusion. All right, well, <laughs> the day has turned into night and it started raining again. It's been pouring all day. Sorry for drawing that video out for so long. I just thought it'd be interesting to talk about and if you have any opinions on what's going on and you know stuff that I don't feel free to share in the comments you know realistically like I said in a video I think a repair could be done and it could last however I think the liability dealing with it is going to be a tough pill to swallow you know the liability is simply too high like I said, though, I'd love to be the guy climbing up on there doing a repair. That's right up my alley. You know, I like a little thrill in my day. It beats sitting around in the office, sitting in a chair all day, if you know what I mean. Anyways, thanks for sticking around, guys. If you can even see my hands. <laughs> Until next time.